Hello and welcome to my poster presentation called Beyond Born Type Methods, The Power of Potential. This work is adapted from the publication Polarization in Strong Field Ionization of Excited Helium. In the corner, you can follow the QR code and that will take you to the paper. My name is Abby and I'm a PhD at UCL and my supervisor is Professor Carla Faria. And I'd like to welcome you today to my presentation for the Atochem Cost action second annual workshop. So today we're going to start off by looking at the motivation and photoelectron holography as a whole. The motivation behind my work was looking at 2p excited state helium in a mid IR field. We look at the strong field approximation, the Coulomb quantum orbit strong field approximation, which is the model that our group has made. And we look at these lines ADC, which is where our imperial collaborators are used and made. And we look at QPROP, which is a TDS solver. We look at binding potential influences for above threshold ionization. And we also look at the shortcomings of the SFA. And we also see that the Coulomb potential rescattering is not confined to the polarization axis. And there is depression between orbital alignment. Now below we have the parameters that we have used and here we move on to photoelectron holography. But before we do that, I must make a little note for all of you dear listeners, is that PZ and PX are the two alignments for uh, the PE, 2P excited state helium. PZ is what we call the parallel alignment because it is parallel to the laser polarization where PX is perpendicular. So this is the perpendicular alignment. Throughout this talk, no doubt I'll use them interchangeably. So there we go. What is photoelectron holography? It's ultra fast imaging of matter. You can get transition amplitudes and phases and high current and high resolution images. So here we have the probe wave and the reference wave. This is what's able to give us these images. Here you have a PMD, a photoelectron um, momentum distribution, which we use throughout this. And here, this distribution is actually some experimental um, data, which is lovely because you can both do this theoretically and experimentally. So now let's move on to issues with the SFA. The SFA is born type and therefore dictates that scattering happens either as rescattered or direct, and electrons are well defined. This is not the case. Some interference patterns are available. As we know, there are quantum interference patterns that are available from, um, from photoelectron holography, and the SFA um, does not describe this well. It treats the continuum and field rest plane waves as the same, and rescattering happens at the polarization axis, and also it neglects the Coulomb potential. Now let's look at our models, the quantum orbit um, strong field approximation, the CQSFA. We, in fact, include the Coulomb potential and the laser field on equal footing and its non born type. And this allows us to then redefine what is direct and rescattered. We use a path integral method with saddle point approximation. From the saddle point approximation, we get the saddle point equations, which give four orbits that the electron may follow. These four orbits is what we can describe types of scattering. So, orbit one and two is what you would say in the SFA is your direct type of rescattering. Whereas orbit three is neither direct nor rescattered, it's somewhere in between. Whereas orbit four is the traditional rescattered. That is why our model differs um, quite significantly because we see that we, uh, scattering is not so binary. We also include a quantum prefactor. This allows us to um, have quantum interference patterns and downstate information is contained in this factor and more quantum features on stability factor two. Now let's move on to some results. Here we have the PMDs, um, and here we're going to discuss depression in them. So let's start off by making sure that we're comfortable with that the Z alignment is the one that is uh, parallel to the laser polarization, and the X alignment is the one that is perpendicular to the laser field. So let us continue. In the top row, we have the Z um, state, and in the bottom row, we have the X state. In the first column, we have the results of QPROP using the IP of, of our uh, target. In the next column, the middle column, we have CQSFA 
using the IP of our target. And in the third column, we have the CQSSA again, but using a higher IP. What we can see from all these diagrams is that suppression for X versus Z alignment uh, for constant IP is overall higher and increasing the IP increases the suppression overall. And this can, see, can be seen by the color. So for instance, if you look at B and E, the color is darker from B to E. Therefore, E has more suppression. And then if we look at F with the higher, higher IP, you can see it's vastly darker. So that is just a general visual inspection of the results we're trying to show here. But what causes the suppression? In our model, we're very, very lucky because we can deconstruct our, um, our orbits into singular paths. Therefore, we can investigate each orbit by itself. So we can see that orbit four is to blame for this suppression. So that is the rescattered orbit. Here we have orbit four, once again, with the two types of IP. As you can see, the, the X, um, the, the X suppression is always greater. And in fact, when you have the higher IP, the X suppression is the largest. Just as we saw before, but this is just particularly showing you it happens at orbit four. Now, a really good exercise is to plot the, the um, tunnel exit and the path that the, uh, the orbits do take. So here in orange, we have the low IP. And for here in blue, we have the high IP. So as you can see, the, the orange moves in the same way as we expect, but it has this point in which it crosses over, whereas the higher IP does not. Now, let's zoom into the axis and inspect the tunnel exits. The tunnel exits are very much near each other, but in fact, there is something in between them that's very important. 5.75 is actually where the Coulomb, Coulomb range uh, ends. So if you imagine, um, it's like, um, it's like a force field or a bubble. And if you're inside it, you'll be affected by it. And if you're outside of it, you won't. So therefore the orange curve, the lower IP, is in the range of the Coulomb. So therefore is being pulled and manipulated by it. Whereas the other side of the force field is the laser field. And that is where the higher IP tunnel exit is. So therefore it's being dominated by the laser field, not the Coulomb force. So now we can draw the conclusions that you can see. Lower IP is lower tunnel exit, dominated by the Coulomb force, so there's more rescattering and it's less directional. And once again, for the higher IP, larger tunnel exit, dominated by the field, less rescattering and more directional. So we can see that rescattering is not restricted to the polarization axis due to the Coulomb potential. And less angular uh, range for rescattering causes a strong suppression for energies greater than 2 UP. Now we look at ATI spectra. Here on the left, we have an ATI spectra for all the models that we have covered in our paper and we mentioned earlier in this talk. On the right, we once again have a comparison of the CQSSA and QPROX using the two different IPs. Below, we have, below and above, we have made some observations and some conclusions that support the work in the paper and what we've mentioned with the PMDs so far. Please enjoy reading them. And if you have any more further questions, or if you'd like to um, discuss anything you see further, please come and talk to me later. So that concludes my poster presentation, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and come talk to me on Thursday the 14th of October, 3 to 5 p.m. Um, set. And I want to thank all the people at Ethochem for this wonderful opportunity. If you want to know more, follow me on Twitter, uh, scan the QR code to check out the paper, or join us for our seminar series that happens nearly every Friday at 3 p.m. UK, UK time. We have some exciting uh, talks coming up and some real wonderful opportunities for you to contribute uh, for free at our seminar series. Thank you.